giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello and welcome to FTC Recap, Road to the Detroit Championship. This group of recaps is all about covering events and regions that will feed to the Detroit Championships and are displayed as are displayed by the first championship map. I'm Andre. If you have any questions that you'd like to be read during the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your question into the chat. Also, we have a straw poll on the screen to see what you guys think of Skystone so far. I'm Jack. And I'm Ritish. If you guys are watching live at twitch.tv slash first updates now, we have two giveaways this evening that will take place between our shows. Let's bring on our produce t producer, Tyler, to talk about our first giveaway and how to win. Yeah, so we're going to put this up on the screen in just a second here. We got a sweet giveaway uh, from our friends at go build a there we go i gotta get the right thing up there we go uh we're giving away uh between shows our first giveaway is going to be a 5202 series yellow jacket planetary gear motor so if you're interested in winning this all you have to do is uh as we get between shows make sure you uh are following fun click that little button uh to be entered and we're gonna have a keyword for you to type in so in between shows we'll be doing that you'll hear me uh, uh doing that once again for those who are watching live on here you gotta make sure you watch live at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now if you are a subscriber help fun stay loud live and independent you're gonna get five times luck don't also forget our fun nation members also get exclusive access to a Twitch channel. Uh, you also get, if we don't have somebody claim a giveaway, you guys get first access. So if you're a sub and you're in our Discord, uh, you get first access to uh, giveaways that are unclaimed. And only about 70% of our giveaways go claimed because for some reason people know how to message us or something like that. So uh, so once again, uh, Yellow pl Jacket Planetary Gear Motor will be given away in between this show. With that said, enjoy our Road to Detroit. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, so let's get this show kicked off with one of the most active states so far, Maryland. Maryland has, was scheduled to have a qualifier on uh, January 18th called DC1, uh, but there weren't enough teams there, so the qualifier was canceled, which means that all those teams were then transferred over to the following qualifiers uh, throughout the state. So that next up we had, and on the following day, we had um, DC2. And at DC2, I'm very proud to say that Virginia teams absolutely crushed it. Um, so... The winning alliance consisted of teams 12096 absolute zero, who destroyed it during um, qualification matches and went totally undefeated. Um, the only ones lost one match in the semifinals when their alliance partner went uh, disconnected and they ended up in their opposing alliance in depot. Uh, their first and second pick were also both from Virginia, uh, and that alliance ended up winning the competition. All three of those teams ended up advancing from the qualifier. Um, all three of the teams advancing from that qualifier ended up being from Virginia too. So go Virginia. Uh, team 14607 Robot Uprising was a finalist in every, almost every award, award category, and they won the Inspire Award, while Absolute Zero was the winning alliance captain. And 8702 Innovatics uh, qualified through Inspire's second place. They were also from Virginia. Uh, the following weekend in Maryland at PG County, um, teams 10537 Baltimore from Virginia again. Uh, and 11534 Bot Brigade Quartic both went undefeated throughout qualification matches and got together in elimination matches to go undefeated against. Uh, they went undefeated against um, team. They, they, sorry about that. Uh, they went undefeated with their second pick, 12342 Lodi Robotics. Um, Flamengo's team, 12773, ended up taking home the Inspire Award. Finally, in Maryland, we had the Capital Tech One qualifier, which was just this past weekend. Uh, team 15308 Fairy Tale went undefeated through qualification matches, and with Team 12518 Almond Robotics and 12718 uh, Lions Den, they went on to win the competition. Inspire Award winner uh, Almond Robotics, winning on Captain Fairy Tale, and the third place Inspire finalist uh, 4234 Engineer Chaos, all three of them ended up advancing to the Maryland State Championship. Uh, this past weekend, 8221 Cubics Cube also hosted a scrimmage in Maryland. And 13 of the best teams from Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania all ended up showing up. 
one unique strategy that was really prevalent at this um, scrimmage was that some teams were practicing double tapping, which I think is going to be a very strong strategy this year, um, especially considering the fact that the capstone has so much weightage this year in terms of scoring. What do you guys think about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you're getting like a 10 or 11 stack, that capstone is another 15 points for that second cap. That is yeah. that is going to be a massive uh massive margin between between matches uh, yeah and i think the fact that it's during end game just makes it all more exciting to see uh, towards the end how things play out well especially the exciting thing is a lot of teams like would preload their capstone on the last stone they catch you you can do that but what a lot of teams do is they just put their capstone on the top which means that second robot's extending all the way up there to put it on and so talk about nerves that's a that can be pretty exciting yeah yeah so next up we have Ohio. Ohio has also been really, really active this past few months. This past month, um, they have they've had qualifiers almost back to back every weekend. Uh, on January 17th, they had at the Wapakoneta qualifier. Um, there they saw we saw the first time we saw 17508 Rising Taw, um, who's a rookie team but not really. Uh, they swept the floor, going undefeated through qualification matches and and also through elimination matches. With their partners 5501 VW Robotics and 6150 Moderately Dangerous. Uh, the following weekend at the Cincinnati Qualifier, we saw Rising Taw again and 5040 Nuts and Bolts, who both placed on top and both ended up going undefeated again. Uh, they paired they paired together along with uh, their second pick 10464 Bionic Tigers, and they went undefeated yet again through elimination matches. Uh, the weekend after, um, there was the Van Wert Qualifier. Uh, where 5501 VW Robotics came back uh, to go undefeated throughout the day with their alliance partners 12802 We Will Bought You and 10117 Party Pandas. Um, at the past two Ohio qualifiers, we haven't seen any noticeable highlights, but there's still one more qualifier this weekend before the Ohio State Championships. Next up was uh, Iowa. Iowa's always been a super competitive league, um, and they've had a couple of super qualifiers and league championships uh, since our last recap. Starting off with the big news, with a high score of 138, taking the Ohio State record from 7236, an alliance made up of 10435 The Circuit Breakers, 6340 Ice, and 5340 Control Chaos won the Johnston Super Qualifiers. We've got that match queued up now. Uh, 10435 also took the second place in Spire Award with 16736 Atomic Narwhals closing out the finalists and 10012 Nevada Nerds Anonymous winning the Inspire Award. The other super qualifiers happened over in Waverly, uh, though it wasn't as high scoring, with a high score of 103 by the winning alliance of 5913 Drop It Like It's Bought, 5143 Eccentrics, and 4324 Lost in Time. Uh, they took the event with the winning alliance. Um, and also 10107, uh, a league of their own, won the Inspire Award, followed up by 12754 Wired Up and 4150 Dark Matter. I'm really excited to see next weekend super qualifiers. We may see another Iowa high score. We'll also see the Iowa State Championships at the end of this month. We will hopefully find more high scores and great matches. Uh, next up, we have Illinois. Illinois has also had a really busy past few weeks, and their league meets were just finishing up through January, and now their league tournaments just finished up um, in the first two weeks of February. At the Crystal, at the Crystal Lake League Tournament, uh, teams 14615 Turbocharged and 10635 Unknown Element played very well and ranked in the top two. Uh, and they ended up on the same alliance, uh, joined by team 6199 Trial and Terror. And they ended up winning the tournament. Uh, we know that 14615 Turbocharged has always had a great season um, so far. And I'm looking forward to seeing them, their um, presence at the uh, Illinois State Championship uh, later in the month. Um, next up, we had the Chicago South League Tournament. Uh, where team 14592 went went through qualification matches completely undefeated, and with teams 15159 We Bite and 116 Crazy Eight, uh, they won the Chicago uh, South League tournament. Uh, at the Toy League tournament, 12971 Control Y, uh, 10303 Robot Rebellion, and 14371 Mount Zion High School took home the um, win. Unexpectedly, 7129 the Robo Raiders, which was a team that was performing really well uh, early to mid-season. Uh, they only ended up ranking seventh at this league tournament. 
Uh, they did end up taking over the Inspire Award to qualify for the state championship, though. The Chicago North League Championship was fairly competitive with teams 8, 10, 836, STEM per 5, and 3507, Robo Theosis, taking home the win. The Peoria League Tournament saw 10101 Binary Bullets, 6596 Robotic Rams, and 8899 EP Robo Raiders to win the tournament. Make sure to keep an eye on the highly competitive Illinois State Championship next weekend, though. Zach, we're on to you. Uh, All right. Talk about Yep. So, started with Virginia. A few weekends ago, we had the Orange Qualifier, which is the last Virginia qualifier of the season. The event had 53 registered teams and was so split into two divisions, the Cayman and the Flowers Division. In the Cayman Division, the field was dominated by Team 8297 Geared Up and Team 8645 Robotic Dojas from Pennsylvania. These teams would go on to partner to be the winning alliance of the Cayman Division along with Team 15325 RoboWatt. In the Flowers Division, we saw very strong performances from Teams 4634 Frogbots Purple, 17160 Frogbots Green, 519 Epsilon Delta. Delta 2 and 7182 Mechanical Paradox. Uh, Ashray was actually able to interview both Frogbot Screen and Mechanical Paradox for behind the bots videos at the Orange quali so, Qualifier, so make sure to check those out. Uh, the Frogbots teams would go on to be ranked number one and two in the division and would partner to reprise Frog Nation along with teams uh, 3668 Smokey Jr. The video we have playing now is the current Virginia high score of 107 with an eight stack by 4634 where they actually missed placing their cap on top of their tower and so missed out of uh, a 13 point bonus well eight point bonus they still had their capstone uh, on the foundation um, but still they were able to sweep elimination uh, the elimination rounds and just had a great showing at the orange qualifier uh, so next weekend is going to be Virginia States and so we're going to have 4634 again we're going to have substantial monocephalic brainstem we're going to have mechanical paradox cubics cubed wizards.exe um, that should be really exciting um yeah. So th thoughts on what we might see from seeing all of those teams in the same place. What do we think? I think it's going to be tr something truly amazing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I, I'm expecting that it will not be expected. Good. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's just going to be really cool. I feel like strategy is going to be a massive component when you have so many high level teams. Um, and yeah. Um, Okay. So get, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, oh. <laughs> Being a team that's going to compete at the Virginia State Championship, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I think that since there's so many teams coming from out of state, it's going to be a very interesting dynamic, especially since we haven't exactly gotten the chance to play with each other um, because of, like, the out of state teams coming in. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out in the elimination matches. Absolutely. Okay, so moving on to New Hampshire. Uh, nothing really has interesting has been going on in New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, joking, of course. Uh, so we got to see a couple weekends ago the beginning of Team 11115 Gluten Free, who sported a very nice five stone auto, uh, I believe a 10 cap. Uh, 10 capped for a total point of 140, which was the world record at the time. Uh, they had a really cool and unique double reverse four bar lift system. We've seen a lot of people gravitating toward early in the season. We saw linear slides. We started then seeing scissor lifts with like titanium tech and aperture science. And then now we see this totally new thing, which appears to does not run off of two motors. Not a hundred percent sure how they're doing that, but it's regardless, it's absolutely incredible and awesome to watch. Um, so yeah, they're, they're just, they're, Mind block, mind boggling. Um, they had the following weekend. They had another qualifier uh, where they managed to get 141. Uh, it was a new high score. Uh, if if I assume many people, many uh, diehard FTC fans would have watched this video by now. Uh, but uh, an interesting fact was that uh, Gluten Free's partner Vertex uh, were acting as their feeder and. Uh, after gluten free capped with about 30 seconds to go, Vertex went in for the double cap and they just barely missed it. But had they capped that, that would have bumped the score up to 155, which would have, in fact, if they also, I don't know if they parked, uh, but that would have been just even, even crazier. And that record would then still hold. Um, so yeah, any thoughts about seeing gluten free who, you know, performed probably the best at 
uh, championships last year and just seeing, you know, what they're going to, what they're going to be able to do this year. I, I honestly can't wait. I know last year they just destroyed the competition. It had an amazing robot. Uh, even at Worlds, they were just far above everyone else. Um, just were k- killing it last year. I can't wait to see what they do this year, uh, especially with stones. Like, it, there seem to be like a lot of teams just stuck at 10 or 11 stones during Teleop. But I'm looking forward to seeing them at Worlds where they're getting, you know, up to 20 stones probably. I right. can't wait for that. Yeah, and... and- Oh, sorry. Honestly, earlier in the season, I thought that the most you would see a single team do in auto was four, and they did five with potentially time to spare. They're using a, they appear to be using a camera system to basically find the stones after they've knocked into them. If they basically have some better way of hand, of not necessarily hand picking, but being a lot gentler, so you're more confident of where they are, uh, they could do a six stone auto, and that's just boggling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that they're stepping up their game even from last year, which is just, you know, truly amazing to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, in that case, let's move on to Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania has seen four notable qualifiers in the past two weeks. Uh, first up is the blue and white qualifier, which featured a winning alliance of 5485 Gorilla Bots, 8645 Robotic Dodges, and Team 1033 TechSpark, who got an event high score of 106. So doing really, really well. Um, later, uh, the next, I think the next weekend, was the Conestoga qualifier, which was dominated by teams 8221 Cubics Cubed and 4174 Atomic Theory, who both went undefeated throughout qualification matches. Uh, in their first semifinal match, they would score a whopping 134 with a capped 11 tall skyscraper, which at the time was tied for the fourth highest score in the world. Uh, 4174 advanced to Pennsylvania States, while Cubics actually declined advancement because Pennsylvania States is the same weekend as Maryland States. Uh, so so, yeah, so they will not be competing at Pennsylvania, but you know, still an absolutely fantastic job there. Uh, in fact, I think Cubix is still – they technically – they themselves have not lost. I think they tied a match, and there was one elimination match where they weren't playing, and their alliance lost. So they're really a force to be uh, to be reckoned with. Uh, so it's going to be really exciting to see how they compete next weekend at Virginia and the following weekend at, uh, at Maryland. Uh, next, we have the Southeastern Pennsylvania Qualifier, which featured an exciting face-off between teams uh, 9872 Informa Logic and 9889 Cruise Control, who both had fantastic seasons so far. Uh, eventually, the number two ranked alliance of Team 5440 Blazing Circuits, Cruise Control, and 198 Two Eyed Illuminati took the tournament after some very stiff competition from 9872 and the number one ranked alliance. Uh, finally, we have the maroon and white qualifier, dominated by Gluten Free. Uh, Gluten Free was able to score 141 again and uh, 139, giving them, at the time, the four highest scores in the world. Before that record was actually edged out by 69-29 this past weekend, which will no doubt be discussed in the Houston recap later on in the show. Uh, so, the one thing I'm just I'd like to discuss is, as we've watched in uh, Skystone autos. We, I've noticed like two different, two main, uh, different ways of grabbing your Skystones. You either have the, use the intake like gluten free and 8802 who have like a camera system and they just use their standard intake, or you have teams like Cubics and tech Nova and data force to a certain amount who use an external arm to grab it. Which do you think in the long run is going to be the more the more uh, effective one, and if one had to get to six stones single-handedly, which do you think it would be? So I'm strongly in favor of the wheel intake um, to grab the sh- sky stones during auto. I think that while the claw bot style w- does work temporarily just to get those four or five stones across, it won't work in the long term when you're thinking states, like these high-level state competitions like Pennsylvania, um, New Hampshire, or Virginia. But and not even at worlds, definitely not at worlds, because when you have teams trying to like start stacks or maybe start 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 stacks of four or five in autonomous, it becomes very tough to do that with a claw. And That's another thing is that claw, yeah, claw also has a limitation because while it is easy to grab it, it doesn't have a lot. It's it's harder to grab when when you're going for your f- fifth or sixth stones in comparison to wheel intake because the wheel will just suck them in and it's going to give you a lot more speed that way. Um, the claw intake will be a little bit slower in that end. So I think that might limit you on four or five stones max. I don't think you'll see higher than that with the claw. 
Yeah, I think in the beginning, definitely the claw intake is a little bit more reliable when you're maybe going for two or maybe three stones. Uh, but when you're going for four or five, when the other stones are kind of knocked out of place, I think it is going to be a little bit tougher with the claw intake. So I think in that situation, I definitely think that the, the, the counter spinning wheel intake is going to be a bit more reliable there. So I'm not particularly decided on either, but I'm going to play devil's advocate with you really quickly. Uh, so last weekend, Data Force got uh, had a five stone auto basically with a claw. So it kind of can be done. And I think one of the main advantages that the claw has over the wheeled intake is that with your wheeled intake, as we saw with like 8802 and gluten-free, they plow through the field. You, you can't grab it super easily. So you end up displacing a lot of stones. So then yeah. you, you know, you don't have a lot of accuracy in knowing exactly where they are. And then if you watch gluten-free's auto, like they like knocked one of those stones halfway across the field. That's a lot of time it takes to go get it. While with the claw, you just pick it up and don't really disturb any of the others. So if you can get that fast enough, you know exactly where they are. You're not running around to get it. It makes for an overall simpler strategy, uh, which may uh, prove out to be the advantage in the long run. Yeah, so yeah it'll, it'll be exciting to see. We'll see. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, right. uh, next up, we have New Jersey with some amazing teams and events that recently took place. Halfway through January, we had the Dragon Summit Qualifier. This was a really interesting qualifier that had scores in the 60s and the 70s. The rankings from the qualification matches were close as no team had 5 out of 5 wins, but 3 teams had a win streak of 4 out of 5 matches. The number 2 seed, Team Overdrive, had a strong line selection and ended up winning the competition after 3 semifinal matches and 2 close, hard, and fought finals matches. Congrats to the winning alliance consisting of the Lions captain, Team Overdrive, Energy Smart, and Fembot. The next weekend, we had the Southern Qualifier. At this competition, we started to see some very good stackers, stacker bots, who could go even as high as seven stones. Also, we had some amazing autons by teams such as Short Circuit, Don't Blink, and Team Mercury, who could deliver two Sky Stones in Autonomous. The alliance selection at this event was quite interesting as the number one seed, Tech Hounds, chose the number two seed, Tektronic Challengers. Congrats to the number four seed, Team Mercury 3944, who ended up winning the event with their partners, the Short Circuits and Bravenators. And also the first Inspire Award winner, Prototype G, and the first second Inspire Award winner, Don't Blink. The winning alliance led by Team Mercury displayed some very strategic play and even only having one Auton run to avoid collisions. The following week at the Frozen Frenzy Qualifier, we had some high scores in matches in the 80s and even 90s. Great job to all the teams there and a huge shout out to the winning alliance, Brave Robotics, Robotic Dodges, and the Inspire Award winner, Robotic Dodges, Transistors, and the Queen Bees. So what do you guys think as we're seeing uh, one really interesting strategy that we've been seeing at these qualifiers is teams who have been placing um, a half capstone versus a full capstone over the block. How do you think that that's going to affect our gameplay throughout the matches? Well, I know for a fact that just having a capstone on there is really important, right? And as you discussed earlier, having two capstones on there is a lot better. So I think that teams that have smaller and easier to use capstones will definitely be a lot better in the long run compared to those teams that are using those big blocks as their um, sky stone, as their capstones. So, right, you want you and if you're still designing your capstone, you want it to be one that it has the capacity that you could put a second one on. Uh, mm -hmm. And that tends to mean it either goes around the center of the stone or, you know, uh, grabs onto a single nub. If you have like base, some teams, you know, basically took a stone and cut off the top nubs. Yeah. That'll work for one. But if you're trying to get that second one, that's a lot harder. Um, so, so definitely, I think the, the, definitely the smaller capstone and then you also come down to okay do you preload your capstone onto your last stone or are you able to score independently that's also something that that's that's been seen so that should be interesting yeah for sure okay and just this weekend we had the snow day showdown league tournament uh we saw some impressive autons at this competition such as out of the box with two sky stones a foundation moved and a park in auton we saw some stacks as even as high as seven with the capstone Congrats to Robotic Rockettes, Out of the Box, and Big Red Robotics for advancing to states. There's still a few more league tournaments to go, but the state championships on March 15th should be packed with very competitive teams. It will be fun to see with already about 36 teams registered. Now moving into New York, New York has had one qualifier since the last recap. The Horace Mann School qualifier took place at the end of January. 
At this competition, we saw a wide range of scores all the way from the 30s to even the 80s. The alliance selection at this competition was intense with alliance captains picking each other. The number one seed, Lionautics 2, picked the number two seed, United, and the number three seed, Robonites, picked the number four seed, Uncertainty Principle. The finals matches in the end were quite close, but the number three seed, Robonites, and their alliance took the win. Congrats to the winning alliance, Robonites, Uncertainty Principle, and Base Robonautics, and the Inspire Award winner, Trinity, Tigers, Uncertainty Principle, and Cap Crusaders. There's still two more qualifiers to go in February before the exciting New York State Championships on March 8th. So what do you guys think is going to be the strategy? Uh, so in a lot of these matches, we saw a feeder bot and a stacker bot. How do you guys think this is going to really play into uh, matches where even if a team can only feed, they might still get picked as that could really, uh, really be a good strategy between the two teams? As we're seeing in this match right here. I yeah, I think that... Go ahead, Dash, right? Sure. So I think that feeding and stacking is going to be a really interesting dynamic because you have to make sure that both teams have practiced on where they're going to place the stones to deliver them and also how the team's going to stack them so that they can keep stacking them in that same orientation. Uh, one interesting thing is that some teams are using a horizontal-based claw uh, and using that prohibits the other team from being able to stack in the opposite orientation unless you're trying to make a two-by-two. Two. So that kind of gameplay and dynamic makes, means that both teams have to know exactly what they're doing to be able to make sure that one team is always stacking rather than having cycles of one team stacking while the other one's getting their second stone in. Yeah, you you, you bring up a great point, Ashre, where like some teams have uh, shown, I think like 6931, they're a really great feeder bot when they act, when they behave as one, but they're a horizontal. So they're not going to behave as a great uh, as a great feeder bot to most teams unless their stacker is also horizontal. So it's not like every feeder bot can work with every stacker yeah. bot. There is actually yeah. some compatibility. Um, so so yeah, so that that's uh, that should be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we have also seen some truly amazing performances from teams outside the U.S. who will hopefully be joining us at the Detroit World Championships later in the season. So at the St. Peter Petersburg qualifier in Russia, we saw 14270 Quantum Robotics. They have displayed some very, very impressive mechanisms with a fast-moving intake and outtake system that has made them really stand out. As the Alliance captain, congrats to Quantum Robotics for winning the qualifier along with their Alliance partner, 11058 Auto Vortex Transylvania. So you can really see how um, in this match, they're really, really competitive in stacking as they're really able to do fast cycles, which I think is going to be super important uh, in the long run. So what do you guys think uh, is going to be the strategy to do fast cycles? Because we're seeing that the time is really running out as you're trying to do maybe nine, maybe 10 stacks. Yeah, I, I, I can, you can see it right in this match that the dynamic between that feeder bot and stacking bot and I think that that's going to be really important that the feeder box can have really, really fast cycles, which means having a small, like, lightweight and really, really fast drivetrain so that you can just move back and forth between that depot to quickly get stones. Like, you see it right here. It's almost in perfect sync. So just speeding that up a little bit would make it, like, ideal. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I've noticed and paid attention to and think is going to be really, really important uh, or interesting is – I believe that looking around, like 95 plus percent of robots this year are this year are using Mechanum Drive. Mechanum's great; it's fast, it's versatile. But if you run it to defense, it's not bad, unless you're against another Mechanum robot. But if, say, a team like 6929 comes in with a tank drive, they're going to push you around. Yeah. So, do you think that we're going to start seeing the more effective feeder bots at championships not being Mechanum or maybe Swerve? Such that they can play super defense, and if they go up against a, uh, excuse me, against a mechanism bot, they're just going to push them around. Do you think you're going to maybe see some of that, and that might be the deciding factor, uh, really decide matches and how effective a feeder bot really is? Yeah, I know firsthand that defense is by far one of the most critical parts of this year's game, especially since like you know you're going crisscross across the field. I think that having a really strong defense that you can play against other teams, even if your robot just has really strong side plates. Being able to play defense will just really shift the dynamic of the match. Um, I know I've seen it in, in person where my robot's playing like really tough defense, and that makes it that the other alliance won't even be able to cross 60 or 70 points. Just having that really tough defense disables their feeder bot completely from being able to do their thing. Yeah, and yeah. I think, yeah. 
And I think even that feeder bot could potentially play some defense while the other, while your other, while your alliance is working on stacking, for example. Definitely. And on the being on, having been on the receiving end of defense, I can say that as a driver, it's disorienting. Like it's it's I don't want to say scary, but like it, especially like this this season. You can practice by yourself all the live long day, but nothing will prepare you properly for a match like going up against other robots who are actively trying to get in your way. And especially with, you know, the very few rules on what you can and cannot do in terms of collision, it's 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 fair game. You need to be yeah. ready for that. You need to build your robot that it can take a hit. Uh, so uh, otherwise you're you're you can get pushed around and like i said it can just be really disorienting so defense is super super effective and if a yeah. feeder bot especially designs itself so that it's it can you know take on take on another um, it, it's going to be a really big advantage yeah so another impressive team this season is team 3954 pink to the future from netherlands uh they've had a pretty successful season so far with a few league tournaments uh their robot is very very cool with an effective grab uh, effective grabber for autonomous and overall very robust autonomous in which they are able to do two sky stones move the foundation and park believe it or not this video is actually towards the start of their season which i think is really amazing they will definitely be a team to keep watching as the season progresses so yeah, I think this autonomous is uh, really impressive for something that was taken at the start of the season. And yeah. uh, like we were talking about, that combination between having a grabber claw versus using the intake for the autonomous is seen here, um, where they're actually using the grabber in autonomous rather than the intake. Yeah. No. I, 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 know... I... Sorry, Sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. So they have, they have a very interesting dynamic where they're using they're using their intake sort of as a claw where they're just grabbing it and they're also like rotating it up slightly to be able to score it which I think is really unique design compared to most of the yeah. things you've seen this season. Right. I think they might have moved on from that since. I'm not 100% certain like I think they've added like a lift to the back and whatnot. Uh, but following peak to the future throughout the season has been really cool. I know that you can see their intake wheels are pink. Like they're main they're keeping to their design and they didn't just take silicone wheels and paint them pink no 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 they made their own wheels like they got casting and they uh, and they actually you know got uh, pink silicone and made their own wheels which i don't think i've seen anywhere else and so that's a super super cool um and their their drivetrain and odometry and i i, I personally i love their side panels i'm they might be 3D printed, but either way, they just look really cool. Uh, so this is a team who did really well last year and really well at uh, Detroit. Uh, so I'm expecting really big things from that from them in this season. Um, and and I, I almost wonder, I don't think last year of the Romanian teams who came to Detroit, at least three of the four, if not all four, made it to um, made it to eliminations. I, as far as, as my recollection serves, I don't know if we've ever had a, uh, at least a Detroit champion from out of the U.S. or on the winning alliance. Do you think this could be the year? I, I definitely see a lot of potential from teams like uh, Quantum and like um, uh, 39, like, like Think to the Future. Um, but it's, it's very, very competitive in Detroit, so it's, it's tough to tell right now. Right. Yeah, it, and it, we see a lot in this game how dynamic is going to be a big thing. So just your individual skill isn't going to be enough to tell whether it'll be enough at Detroit. We have to really see how these teams are able to work together. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And that might be one advantage that a team from, say, Pennsylvania or Iowa who had, who, you know, they... They don't have qualifiers with a lot of timid teams. They have qualifiers with really competitive teams, really aggressive teams. And so they get that mindset early of how you have to play. Whereas Pink to the Future might not face much serious competition, not to squander any Netherlands teams, but might not might not face that sort of resistance until Detroit. And that could be a major disadvantage uh, for them. Yeah, definitely. So wrapping up the show, uh, I believe Tyler has a giveaway for us. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing the uh, Yellow Jacket Planetary Gear Motor uh, in between our next show. Uh, so we're going to, uh, we'll start that right now. Why not? So uh, if you're interested in winning the uh, Yellow Jacket Planetary Gear Motor, type in the following keyword, Yellow Jacket, two words, Yellow Jacket. Uh, is your key to get in. We're going to draw for that before the next show. Uh, don't forget, you do need the follow. Uh, first updates now, stay up to date on all of our content. And if you're interested in helping fun, stay loud, live, and independent, go ahead and subscribe, guys. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime, or if your parents have Amazon Prime, you can link your account, uh, or just a few bucks a month. We appreciate it. You can skip the local milkshake shop or whatever kids do these days and pitch in a couple bucks for us. We'd appreciate it, guys. Uh, but yeah, once again, Yellow Jacket is your keyword. They get in, we'll draw for that in just a few minutes. Yeah, thank you again, guys, for all the follows and subscription we've received so far. Uh, don't forget you can subscribe for free or if your parents have Amazon Prime. Uh, we hope they enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. Uh, if you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Fun FTC and join our Discord through the link in the chat. Uh, stay tuned for our, um, our Houston Recap coming up soon. And on behalf of myself, Ashre, and Vitesh, and our producer Tyler working behind the scenes, we'd like to thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.